Good evening, Titans. This is Mr. Sturtz. We are on lesson 9.1. We're going to do the second section of this video. All this video is going to contain is performing operations with radicals. We're going to add and subtract radicals here. Um, so open up your student journal. I know you already took notes in there, so if you don't have room, maybe use another sheet of notebook paper. Make sure we just get these examples down so when you come to class tomorrow, we're a little better prepared. All right, our main concept is when we have radicals with the same index and radicand, they are called like radicals. Okay, let's talk about what that means. If we think about a radical here, and let's say we have a 5 underneath. What that 5 is is what we call the radicand. It's the number underneath our radical. Now the index is just the number out front. So if we're working with a cube root, our index is 3. All right, so if we have the same index, same radicand, we have what we call like radicals. When this is the case, we can add and subtract like radicals. So let's do an example. Let's say we have two cube roots of 5 plus three cube roots of 5. Okay, we have the same index, we have the same radicand in both of those, so we can just add our like terms. If we have two cube roots of 5 and we add three of them to it, we end up with five cube roots of 5. So really we can just add and subtract our like radicals when the index is the same and the radicand is the same. All right, let's hop into a couple examples here. Number one, we're looking for like radicals. Okay, again, we see that square root of 2 and square root of 2. Um, we know we can assume that index is a 2 since it's a square root, since we don't see a number. So let's go ahead and just combine those. If we have 3 square roots of 2 and 10 square roots of 2, we're going to end up with 13 square root 2. And then we have that radical 6. Well, we don't have any other radical 6s, so we're just going to subtract a radical 6. Okay, and that's our simplified expression. All right, number two, now we don't see any like terms. We don't see any like radicals there. So what we want to try to do is work with that square root of 63 and rewrite it using our multiplication property of radicals so we can get a square root of 7. So if we think about that square root of 63, if we rewrite that 63 as 7 times a number, okay, so we're just going to work with this right side here. If we rewrite that as 6 square roots of, we know we want a 7, and then 7 times 9 is going to be 63. All we did, this right here and this right here, these are equivalent. Okay, we just wrote, rewrote that right side. Now, if we keep working with that, we can use our multiplication property and split that radical up. So we can rewrite it as square root of 7 times square root of 9. Now, all these are being multiplied together, so we're still just working with this right side. Now, we know what the square root of 9 is. The square root of 9 is 3, so again, if we rewrite that, and we're multiplying times 3, now, since we're multiplying, we can still switch them up. It's commutative. We can move the order. We can switch around the numbers. So if we rewrite it one more time, we can have 6 times 3, which we know is 18, square root of 7. Okay, we're almost done. Now let's work back with that left side. We have 4 square root of 7 minus 18 square root of 7. We have the same radicand, same index, so we can combine, subtract our like terms. So 4 minus 18 is negative 14 square root 7. Okay, and we have our simplified answer there. All right, number three. We have the same index. Our index is 3. We have our same radicand. Our radicand is 5x. So let's just subtract like terms. 4 minus 11, we get a negative 7. And we have our cube root of 5x. Okay, so the main, the core concept there is we can just add and subtract our like terms when we have the same index and the same radicand.